let's just say if you're looking to watch a series about AI, faith, comedy, adventure, history, any of the above, this show has got it. We have Jake McDormand who plays Wiley and Chris Diamantopoulos who plays JQ. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Hey, thanks for having us. It feels like AI is taking over the world, but this wasn't necessarily the fact when you guys were shooting the show. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, maybe the timing of it and just, you know, the, the whole theme of, of AI. Yeah, the timing is really crazy. Um, I wonder how much, Damon. Because, um, yeah, I felt like the, the week that our show aired, Chat GPT just kind of catapulted into the news in a way that, you know, was different than before. I mean, obviously, artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence has been a topic of conversation since forever, 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 right? But it does feel like where we've gotten to now, where we're confronted with, what if something can answer pretty much all the questions that you know we ever wanted to know um, in an instant without any processing time? What does that mean for things like faith? Uh, what does that mean for things like magic? And and, and, all, and honestly, I feel like a whole list of other things that we can't even comprehend until it kind of breaches that trust we have with everything. So uh, it, it's it's weird to have started this kind of press cycle <laughs> talking about our show about AI when now it's breathing down our actual mind. Oftentimes, shows come out either a little too early or a little too late. So we're, we're really kind of fortunate that that it's kind of in the zeitgeist and it makes it that much more compelling when you watch the show. Oh, and on a side note, I've been afraid of artificial intelligence since Chucky and Child's Play and since the 80s. So like, this is just the moment that I feel like has been coming. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Jake, let's talk a little bit about the character of, of Wiley. You play the ex-boyfriend of Simone. Tell me a little bit about that dynamic of not being the partner. You know, obviously she, she's a nun now, but getting to play that dynamic of an ex. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, uh, it's great. I think that's one of the dynamics that made it so much fun is because I think he, he rocked us into this story towards the end of episode one, very much with the energy of like, I'm the lead character. I'm going to take care of you. And I think this is a very, very meticulously planned entrance, a very meticulously planned execution of, I'm gonna have the red jacket, I'm gonna look cool, I'm gonna fly in there, I'm gonna save her, I'm gonna put her under the big rock, and then I'm gonna show her that I'm in charge and that she's an admission. And very quickly, as an ex-girlfriend can, just kind of rips that apart and, and just dismembers all the little things that he's got going on that like, well, what's this mustache? Who the hell do you think you are? What, 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 what? You're not the lead character, I'm the lead character. Uh, and that's fun to spar with somebody like Betty Gilpin on because she's just so adept at being, you know, hilarious and then oscillating right to being like soul crushing. Um, so yeah, it's fun. I mean, he's the leader of this underground resistance that involves JQ and, and Chris's, Chris's role. Uh, but, you know, I think you find out soon that even if their intentions are to take down this all-encompassing AI, they kind of are just a group of boys with toys. And Simone kind of throws a wrench in their plans of how cool they want to be. <clears throat> and as far as going with uh, with JQ, Chris, tell me a little bit, because he wasn't all, the character wasn't all fleshed out when you first heard about the part. And how did it kind of evolve from, here's this character we have to a shirtless Australian version of, of G.I. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good analog, actually. Um, you know, I will say Tara and, and, and Damon Lindelof uh, crafted a really complex, chaotic, and, and beautiful, beautifully unique universe. And these characters are just, they're so vibrant, so alive. Um, and so, so much of JQ was on the page, but both Tara and Damon were uh, looking to find just those added little uh, idiosyncratic elements that can, can make him pop even more. And I, I think it was a, a confluence of all of us having the conversation and me trying out this sort of epic, like narrator, cinematic Russell Crowe meets every Hemsworth brother, uh, you know, rolled into one. And uh, once we found the voice, then we realized that this guy, this guy's going to take his shirt off as often as he can. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> and but he has that Hemsworth energy. That's, that's what's happening right there. Yeah. 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 Exactly. He wants to, he, JQ. JQ really wishes he was like either in Fight Club or The Fifth Element uh, or, you know, like like he, he, he has all of these uh, cinematic tropes that he draws from to really sort of combine and, and, uh, and make the JQ that we will uh, come to know and love. 
with every version of technology that we've gotten, whether it was a desktop computer, a smartphone, uh, credit cards where you just tap them and you don't have to, you know, swipe them. There's been like a generation or, you know, maybe a personal journey for everybody is like, this is, this is too much. And this might be what some people are dealing with, with, with AI. For each of you, was there something that came along technology wise that you were like, I'm, I'm not interested, but then either fell in love with or still are resisting? For me, I'll tell you, it was social media. I missed the boat. I just missed the boat. And, and I remember I, 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 I never had a Facebook page or Instagram or Twitter. And then I did a movie. And in my contract, they said that I had to you know, post social media. So I, I, I was excited. I was like, okay, I missed the boat. D don't have any idea how to do it or what it is. And I'm, I'm going to do it. And so I, I signed up and, uh, and I started tweeting and Instagramming or whatever the hell it was. And, and, I, and I was, it, was, it was fun. I'd wake up in the morning. I have these quippy little ideas. And then I offended everybody and, and made everybody upset. And I lost followers. And, and I would have this pit in my stomach every morning of like, Oh gosh, I, I don't want to look at it. And uh, these random people popping up that I'd never heard of. And I, 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 and it exploded my mind. And I thought, I'm not right for this. And so I don't have social media. And I didn't know that, Chris. I just looked for you on Instagram the other day. And I was like, I guess he's not on here. I think that's going to prove to be a, a wise decision. Not, not at all because of anything about you specifically. I feel like I, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm kind of silently hoping that we uh that, that it was it's a phase because i feel uh, like i i have a young niece and like some of the younger generation now is being like yeah why are you guys always taking selfies it's so cringe like i, I feel like you missed the boat and you missed a good boat whew, whew. yeah i don't get it <laughs> well here's one boat not to miss miss davis new episodes coming on thursdays on peacock the show is tackles technology versus faith it's got comedy it's got everything that you're looking for basically if you want to sit down and relax or solve a mystery this is a show for you jake chris thank you so much for your time today thank you thank very you. much